invite you to the way of the nozzle, the fountain of creation. And today we learn the language of its gods. Hello legends and welcome back to Create Inc. By the end of today's video, you would have learned everything about how CNC machines, 3D printers in particular, take in a model and give you a finished product. When I first got my 3D printer, I tried to get it to print me something and this is how it went. Print me a Benji. Please. Pretty please. This. Well, f you. Yeah, that confused me as well. But soon after, I realized that I need to start with a 3D model. This model is then converted to a set of commands that the printer can understand called G code. Now, this is a typical 3D printing pipeline. It starts with a model that you can create yourself, or you can pick something that someone has already created and is freely available on websites like Thingiverse. These models could be in a bunch of different formats, but STL is the most popular one so far. You put these models into a specialized software known as a slicer. My favorite one is the Prusa slicer because it's free and open source. If you use Cura or some other slicer, please tell me what you like about them in the comments. The slicer then lives up to its name and slices the model into layers and spits out a set of G-code commands. Why? Because Slicer is a quitter. That's why. Anyway, G-code manages everything on your printer, from the temperature of the nozzle, the speed of the fan, to the position of the print head itself. In other words, your printer isn't smart enough to understand what it's printing. It just knows that it has been given a command to go to a particular position and to extrude a particular amount of filament. You can see these commands by simply opening the G-code file that your slicer has produced in a text editor like Notepad. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few important G-code commands. But first, let's understand how positioning works for a 3D printer. Like most things that require positioning, the print head of our printer lives in the 3D Cartesian space. The horizontal is the x-axis, the vertical is the y-axis, and the height of the nozzle is the z-axis. Any point in this space can be described by three coordinates. The first one being the x-coordinate that shows where it lies on the x-axis. The next one being the y-coordinate that shows its position on the y-axis. And finally, the z-coordinate that shows its height. The bottom left of your build plate is the origin or the home position that is considered at 0, 0, 0. Now, G0 is the command that tells our printhead to move to a particular point in this space. It looks something like this. We would break down what each of these letters mean, but first let's take a simplified example. This command is telling our printhead to go to the position 100, 200, 200. If we get rid of the Z parameter of the command, the printhead would simply move to the X and Y coordinates while keeping the Z coordinate constant. This would often be the case because a 3D printer prints layer by layer. This is where we'd also get into relative and absolute positioning. But before that, you know I work hard on these videos. In an effort to bring you original content, I try to do everything from the graphics to the animations, the programming, and even the music myself. So if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon, or just help me get noticed by the YouTube algorithm by throwing a like and more importantly, a comment. And while you're at it, subscribe to not miss out future content. Now, back to our video. There can be two types of positioning for printers, relative or absolute. The G90 command is used to activate absolute positioning. What does that mean? It simply means that this command would move the printhead to the absolute coordinates 30, 30. 
If I give the exact same command again, it would have no effect because the printhead is already at 3030. But if I give a G91 command first, the positioning is now changed to relative. That means that the same command would now move the printhead 30 units on the X axis from the current position and 30 units on the Y axis from the current position. If I give the same command again, the exact same thing would occur. After this, there is only one parameter of the G0 syntax that still remains unexplained. That is the F parameter of the command. F stands for feed rate or speed. On Marlin based printers like my Purusha Mark 3S, it's simply the speed in millimeters per minute. If you are a Prusha fan like myself, give Prusha a shout out in the comments. We learned how to move the print head. Now let's see how to extrude filament. Very similar to the G0 command is the G1 command. The only difference here is this E parameter. You might already have guessed what this is for and of course you're right. It's for extrusion. Just like the X, Y and Z coordinates, the E parameter could also be either absolute or relative. But what exactly is this E parameter? The exact implementation would depend on your particular printer and firmware. It could either be the volume of the filament to extrude, or as is the case with my Mark 3S, the length of the filament to extrude. Now, how can you tell how much filament would be required for a particular move? It's actually a very simple function of the layer height, line width, and the length of the move. Different slicers would of course use different approximations, some simpler and some more complex. But this is a great approximation that I use. The volume of a line of extruded filament would be the area of these two semicircles plus the area of this rectangle multiplied by the length of the line. Now, if your printer takes volume as the E parameter, you can just feed this in and be done. But if your printer takes length of the filament, like mine does, you can calculate it very simply like this. I use filament with 1.7 mm diameter. This would be the length of the filament required. We have so far learned about G0, G1, relative and absolute positioning. And you are done with what would comprise about 90% of any G-code file. Now, I would throw in a few more commands that would help you set the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature and the fan speed. But of course, this video isn't meant to be an exhaustive documentation. For that, I'd leave links in the description. If you think I have missed any important commands, you can leave them in the comments. So, using these very principles, I earlier created a tool that allows you to directly generate G-code instead of creating an STL file and then slicing it. You can click on the i button if you want to check out that video, which is also my best performing video so far. Before you think of clicking away, we have created a subreddit for this channel where I'm trying to build a community of tinkerers and thinkers. If you'd like to reach out to me or discuss any of the videos or other things, that would be the best place to do it. With that, we are at the end of yet another video. If you like my work, my Patreon is on your screens and also in the description of this video. But the easiest way to support me is to throw a comment in the comment section that tells YouTube that my content is worth watching. And if you like the video, you know what to do. If you didn't, the other one is fine. Hit subscribe, share, bell icon, any other button you see. And until next time. Just keep building.